Welcome to Based On, an adaptation podcast. I'm Pamela Portnoy. Today we have our first returning guest on on our show, James Liddell. We'll be talking about Fight Club, directed by David Fincher and written for The Scream by Jim Oles, which is, of course, based on the novel by Chuck Palahniuk. Just a fair warning, there will be spoilers. Now, what were you saying, James? What was I saying? My lack of energy. Oh, well, now you're awake. I don't know what the hell happened. You flipped a switch. You're a real performer over here. (laughs) (laughs) What'd you think? First of all, thank you for coming back. Yeah, no, I'm happy as excited. Um, You're a sucker for punishment, clearly. Yeah, no, this was a good one. This was a good pick. I I enjoyed. I don't know. I feel like it was a mutual thing. Yeah. Let me pull your questions up here so I'm prepared. I totally forgot to think about them all day long like I planned on. Well, I think you will hear me ask you what they are. Yeah, but I, you know, I don't want to be. All right, I'm ready now. Go ahead. Oh my goodness. We do what we do. Write the down your first? answers. Is this no? I haven't even thought about them. Now I'm ah, now I'm freaking out. All right, we are doing a rapid fire quiz I'm with you. I'm not prepared for this, by the way. It's that's how I like it now. Now, now I just want that. So, you already answered my first round of rapid fires, and so. Because it's your second time. But also, I want to uh, interrupt you real quick and say, yeah. remember the last time when you asked me the rapid fire questions and you asked me my favorite actor? And I said, yeah. I don't know. And I didn't have an answer. And I said, I'm going to think, well, I watched Flight Club and you should have reminded me that my favorite actor Brad is Pitt. Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah. So let me answer Hello. that one now. <laughs> Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, of course. Uh, Anyway, go on. Now um, we've now maybe next time I can answer these questions. Perfect. We'll have you on the third time. Uh, ready to adapt? Yeah. <laughs> Question one of your newly uh, formulated quiz. I made this specifically with you in mind. Oh, great. <laughs> Let's go. Question one. What is your Desert Island book? Um... I I don't know. I I have to just say my favorite book, I guess, The Fall. Perfect. Best sex scene in film. See, this is the one that I wanted to think about um, because I have no idea. I I haven't thought it through, but I recently um, discovered the movie Wild Things. So I'm going to go ahead and say the sex scene with Denise Richards in Wild Things. I haven't seen it, but I'll have to check it out. There you go. Fabulous. What is your guilty pleasure film? Um, what, does, what is guilty pleasure? Anyway? I feel like it's different for everybody. Yeah. What film do you... Beautiful. We're off to a rocky start here. Let's turn this thing around, man. What do you mean we're off to a rocky start? The AC is coming on. I don't have good answers. You're half asleep at the wheel. Excuse me. <laughs> I think I'm doing a fantastic job. No, always do. It's me. All right. So you were asking what it means. Like what a guilty yeah, what pleasure. Yeah, what is a guilty is. pleasure? It's It depends on your point of view what is a film that you watch that you might feel a little embarrassed about okay okay because i was thinking about this earlier and i started like thinking about you know silly movies that i love and enjoy all the time and i started thinking about like adam sandler movies which are always great in my eyes and started thinking about Billy Madison. Let's not a movie I could watch about over this. and over and over again. And then I thought, you know what? That's not even a guilty pleasure, though, because it is a really good movie. It, it is a very good and movie. And you're about well, then, to say that I've never seen it, but I have. I and just because you I have, I have. But the thing is, just because I can't quote every line. Well, here's the thing. Unbeknownst doesn't mean to you, I haven't seen it. Every time we've done a podcast together, I've quoted it without telling you. 
So you can listen back to all of our podcasts and try and find the Billy Madison quotes, as well as every time I see you, I quote the movie. And you've never once picked up on it. I have. So I think it's fair it. to say you haven't seen it. I have seen it and I have picked up on it when you mention it to me in person. And well, when after I we watch it, Fight Club, let me when tell I you, quote, no, after we watch Fight Club, <laughs> I realize that you quote Fight Club in front of me. Do I? Yes, you do. What, what do I say? <laughs> Something about like how you would rather me hate you than to treat you with indifference. <laughs> I think that just is is more of like a coincidental same point of view as Fight Club you kind of thing. You just have a very similar mindset. I was going to say. The characters in this movie. Yeah, I, I had a feeling you might bring that up. The way that you think that I view the world is very Tyler Durden, I would say. Yeah, I would. I would say so. Anyway, let's get back on track. What is the anyway, best guilty television? pleasure film? Oh yeah, you said Bill E. Madison, but no, because it's not a guilty pleasure though. I take pride in it. I don't feel guilty about it. Um, what movie do I watch that I don't know? But uh, I'll come back to it. Will you? Yeah, something will come up. Cool. What is the most traumatizing book you've ever read? Uh, traumatizing. I don't think I've ever been traumatized by a book. No really? Answer. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to switch that to a film? What's the most traumatizing book you've ever read? I remember when I read The Giver in fifth grade, it really kind of messed me up and I can't really put my finger on why. What's The Giver? Um, let me pull it up for you and I'll read you a quick synopsis. Yeah. How about that? But uh, what in the meantime, while I'm doing that, do you have a movie? movie? Hmm. I don't know that I've ever been traumatized by a movie, no. No trauma here. Not even when you were little, like a cartoon that made oh, you sad? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, no. I guess... Um, do you feel things? <laughs> old Yeller. <laughs> okay. Old Yeller, yeah, for, I think someone else for, had that same answer the other day. For sure. I was definitely extraordinarily affected by that movie as a kid i always had a golden retriever that was my childhood dog yes i don't like the the dog movies they drive me yeah it's really upsetting I feel so like i found pretty... this yeah, i found ahead. the synopsis if you're interested yeah i am the giver is a story of a brilliant boy named jonas who happens to live in a society that is being controlled by the rules and tradition of the elders through his wisdom and mannerisms Jonas is selected as a receiver of memory, a post that distinguishes him from others and gives him authority. I like it. Yeah. It's it's a good story, but I just remember it was it like messed me up when I was reading it when I was young. I'll put it on my list. Fabulous. You should. I need some trauma. I think we're we're going through plenty of that right now. <laughs> That's true. Might as well pile it on. <laughs> Would you rather watch Boromir die every day or watch Ned Stark die every day? Okay, so I, I could have avoided this moment, but I, I feel like it's owed to me, and you're going to kill me when I ask you who is Boromir. Wait a minute. You haven't seen Lord of the Rings? Well, I gave you the play-by-play -play when I watched it on the plane. But it, Okay, when Sean Bean's character dies. Oh, okay. Apparently, I wasn't that affected by it. Oh, fuck. But Ned Stark, come on. Yeah, but Boromir's pretty gnarly because he has a bunch of arrows. Yeah. Fucking yeah, but shot they just chopped him. his head off, man. I know, while his daughter watched. That, no, that's... That, I'm going to go ahead and say Ned Stark, even though I don't fully recollect Boromir. Okay, fine, fine. I mean, that was, come on, come on. Excuse me? Oh, what, Ned Stark or my question? No, Ned Stark. We were oh, all yeah, waiting no, to see redemption. We get used to storytelling being done one way. We see, oh, I want this thing to happen. Ned Stark has to get revenge on, on Jamie Lannister and, and write things. And we're ready for it. Oh, write things. let's cut his head off. 
I know. The titular character of what the series to this point. His head off. It's like, okay, everybody wants to see him kill Jamie Lannister. Everybody wants to see him take the throne and 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 write Westeros. Everyone wants what should we do? Oh, cut his head off in a second. <laughs> in front Without of his a, kid. In front of his kid. <laughs> It's not funny. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go with Ned Stark. <laughs> the more we talk about it, yeah. Stupid <laughs> question. Because yeah, of course Ned Stark. This is what I wanted. This is truly what I wanted. This kind of You reaction. set me up on this one. <laughs> okay, question seven. Would you rather have to sit on someone's lap every time you watch a movie or sit next to someone who comments Listen, on every scene? <laughs> I'm just not watching movies at that point. <laughs> I'm done with movies. I'll I'll read books. I'm reading books. <laughs> Sit on someone's lap. <laughs> and the commenting thing. You hang out with Luke. One of you oh, has to sit on the other's lap. Better than him. To watch a movie. Yapping the whole time. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay. Christ. So would you choose the lap over the talking? I'm just not watching movies at that point. No, that's you can't cop out. You have to choose. I'll take the lap. I'm I'm laughing. All right. Because All right. Shut up. Especially in the movie theater. <laughs> you ever go to the movies with somebody and they just won't stop? I'm asking. I mean, usually I make a comment or or two, like a like a like oh, a. I know what that pause was because <laughs> you're afraid <laughs> that you're gonna go off and that person. <laughs> Is going to hear it. So clearly, yes. No, no, no. Let me just say, don't ever go to the movies with that person again. No, that's not the case. With me, I've actually, I, I am only hesitating because I will never, I'm not completely silent in movies, but I don't talk. I will like give a reaction to my neighbor. No, be silent. From here on out, be Excuse silent. Excuse me. <laughs> be it silent. doesn't matter. You chose the lap. It's fine. Don't breathe during movies if there's people <laughs> around, please. Okay, ready? No, I could no 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 no. No, we're still <laughs> I on keep this. Ranting about we're this still because. on this? I had somebody one time I went to the movies with with a, a friend and they complained to a mutual friend about me being quiet during the movie. Excuse me? Yeah. You're joking. James, James is like really quiet. We're in the movie. <laughs> what do you want? This is a place that they tell you to be quiet before Shut the movies. <laughs> up. It's frowned upon to talk. Yeah, and I'm getting bashed. Are we in I a social like environment? Anyway. Are we we'll save the comments for the debrief? Right. We'll talk you know, about over this dinner later. or drinks later. Don't yep. do it. Yeah. So I'm sitting on laps. All right, fair. Fuck, marry, or kill. This, I don't the understand. The Notebook, <laughs> Titanic, and Casablanca. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just go on I gut on this one. I told you they'd be like one. more salacious, I'm these questions. Fuck in the Notebook? <laughs> I'm killing Titanic, <laughs> and I am walking Casablanca down the aisle. <laughs> I don't fully understand the question. It doesn't matter. You don't have to. That's what my gut is saying that I want I love it. The notebook. (laughs) I don't know. That's hard. I like, I I picked like three of the best. Who are you uh, fucking out of these three movies? You would murder me with my answers. Let's hear it. I'd fuck the notebook. Titanic. Oh, okay. You would. I'd marry the Titanic and I'd go (laughs) cause (laughs) the. Whatever. <laughs> Bullshit. I mean, I think everyone's fucking the notebook. <laughs> everyone's fucking the notebook. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, love come it. on. <laughs> okay. You can only pick three of the following people for your post apocalyptic team Furiosa, Sarah Connor, Beatrix Kiddo. Trinity, Katniss Everdeen, and Wonder Woman. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go with Furiosa. Yeah. I'm going to go with Katniss. Yeah. And Wonder Woman. Fair. 
Should You're I explain? Choosing... Well, I feel like Wonder Woman has powers, and then the other two already are very comfortable in a post-apocalyptic environment. Yeah, listen. All right, Wonder but Woman so is going to take Connor. care of everything. Wonder Woman's going to take care of absolutely everything. Mm-hmm. We don't got to worry about shit, right? Yeah. Furiosa clearly knows the ropes of post-apocalyptic world. Mm-hmm. She knows the ins and outs. Mm-hmm. And then Katniss is like, gonna feels feed like you? she's going to feed me. <laughs> hey. She's going to hunt all your food. <laughs> no, I feel like she could still have like that level of humanity to be a good companion and have somebody to relate to. Interesting. Can we just like acknowledge that you will be the weakling in the group? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Very good. Beatrix Kiddo, I mean, she she's not going to do shit for anybody unless it's to get revenge on somebody. So she You don't know home. that. Oh, she's got some on. skills. Well, yeah, obviously, but she's yeah. not going to use them unless it's to kill Bill. How do you know? I've seen the goddamn movies. But it's, what if lives are on the line? You don't think she'd step I up don't. and use her fucking listen, samurai I'm sword? i my money on Katniss every day. All right. I don't think there's a wrong answer. We're just trying to get to know your tastes here. All right? <laughs> Fair enough. A hell of a question to do that. <laughs> Okay, would you rather piss off Neo or John Wick? Mm. That's tough. I know. I gotta say John Wick. Yeah. Because he's gonna make it quick. I don't know. what I would think Neo wouldn't really care. Like, he's would just be unaffected. He couldn't be mad. Mm. Whereas John Wick... He's gonna make. He's just gonna shoot me, and I'm dead, and the the thing's done. I agree with that second part, but I think the first part, like why I wouldn't want to piss off Neo, is because he actually has way more like control of his environment. Yeah, but he also, I feel like, wouldn't get. I mean, how do you piss off Neo? You have to be a sentinel. Of course, someone who is such a philosophy. You can't piss off lover Neo. is gonna be like, well, he's Zen. How are you gonna piss him off? Somehow, some way, you pissed right. the That's guy off. That's why I'm off. going with John Wick because he's gonna make it quick. All right, cool, very good. You made we it. Did it. We made it. I still gotta come up with the. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, what was the one guilty pleasure film? But what we'll, uh, that'll come to me at some point throughout the pod. Did you answer my best television show question? Oh, I think we skipped that. Yeah, you skipped right over that. Okay, well, final question. What is the best? I know I remember asking you. Did some, I think something happened maybe. But anyway, what is the best television show of all time? Best television show of all time. Oh, you know why you think we talked about it already? Probably because it... you asked me the last time. No. I think. No. Because didn't I start bashing Game of Thrones ending the last season? Or was that for a different reason? I think it was for a different reason. Well, let's go right back into bashing the last season. Because <laughs> I feel like that would have been my definitely my favorite TV show of all time. Okay. If it weren't for the last season. Um, but, you know, I guess we don't need to go into that again. I, I don't know. I'm torn. I want to say Breaking Bad. What's um, the film that, I mean, the TV show that we really like? Well, about the dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Who did the dicks? <laughs> Who did the dicks? What's dick? that show called? I forget. Is it it's not American Graffiti? That's American a- Vandal. Vandal, thank that's you. That's a great show. You know what? I I kind of want to say my the best TV show of all time right now. I feel like is uh, I got to go with Rick and Morty. Oh, it's fantastic! It's the best show ever. My friend Sean got me into that. Yep. It's so good. I think the um, only way it won't be my favorite show of all time is if they don't make like three more seasons at least. Mm. Okay. Okay. Fair, 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 fair. Now we made it, but you except did it. uh, you didn't do the guilty pleasure one. Nah, but whatever. If you come whatever. up with it at any given point, please. I will. Stop everything. Cloud Atlas. Really? 
I've never actually seen that. It just seems like a stupid movie. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, Fight Club. Oh, yeah, that that's what we're doing. That's what Fight we're Club. here for, Fight What'd Club. What do you think? I mean, I saw this film a very long time ago, and yeah. what really stuck with me the most, as you know, is Brad Pitt. <laughs> oh, I mean, come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the man is beautiful. Oh, he's a babe. <laughs> Such a babe. Um, it's really hard to like forget some of the iconic scenes. Yeah. Uh not to mention his acting, as well as Edward Norton's and um Helena Bonham Carter. Yeah. Good acting. And David Fincher is a beast of a director. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, it's I just mean, a really movie. beautiful, it's a really film. great movie. Yeah, I don't know if I'd use the word beautiful. I would for sure. Most okay. of the sh- like sets and all that, like the setting, it's like dilapidated. It's all, but it's shot in such a way that is it's disgustingly beautiful. It's stunning. Yeah, it's stunning. I think is a good word. All right. All right. Beautiful. What's different to beautiful. you between beautiful and stunning? Ah, well, that would depend on uh, your philosophy on beauty and aesthetics. Here we go. Hit me with it. I don't, I mean, beauty to the word just, I don't think a fight club is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, things can like be, you know, stunning or sublime or, or these other words that are not beautiful and still be amazing. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's more so stunning, stunning, captivating because it literally stuns you. Because it's not beautiful. <laughs> this is not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> this is not helpful. <laughs> what were your thoughts? Why well, because did we... there's a be- when you no 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 when something's beautiful, it evokes a, a specific feeling, and it it's not that this movie isn't that. It doesn't mean that the feeling that it evokes isn't as strong or as impactful or as delightful. It's just not beautiful. I think there was an incredible amount of thought put into the artistry of every shot in the film. Doesn't mean And so if you're beautiful. standing behind the camera, you don't think people were saying that's a beautiful shot. Oh, that's a stunning shot. That's okay. a great <laughs> shot. That's an effective shot. That's an amazing shot. Not a beautiful shot. I disagree. All right. Well, you know, what does beautiful mean to you? Appealing to the eye. Visually enjoyable. <laughs> Blood red mad right now. You're so- <laughs> mad <laughs> anyway moving on moving on so here's the thing um you i remember like we were kind of tossing around like um a handful of books what mm-hmm. made you throw this into the mix i don't know it's a movie that i you know have seen a handful of times since i was young and uh i always wanted to read the book mm-hmm. and it felt like a good opportunity to do so and revisit the movie yes sir so what are your I'm so glad we did. I, I've I've really enjoyed it. What were some of your thoughts on the casting? I mean, it's <laughs> change nothing. <laughs> change nothing. Yeah. It's great. I mean, you know, aside from Jared Leto, you could recast him and I wouldn't care. Really? I would literally was just thinking about him. It kind of like surprised me that he was in it. Did you did you remember that he was in it before you watched no. it? Or did you go, oh, is that? Oh, Jared you know. Leto? I took a quick look at the IMDb uh, while I started the film, and mm. I was like, wait, Jared Leto's in this? So I was kind of waiting for him to come on. Yeah, I mean, I'd say it jokingly. I'd, it, he doesn't bother me at all, and, and it's such a small role that it doesn't actually really. Did you know what his uh, character's, uh, what his character was called? Angel Face. Angel Face. Yeah. Which was just great, because yeah. all he says is, I wanted to destroy something beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Destroy something beautiful. Yeah. And in, in the film before he was destroyed, 
he was beautiful and then he wasn't. Hit me with it. I think that says it all. I, I don't think that there's a need to respond to that. You know, it's really in everything that he does. You know, it was really interesting. He, well, f- yes, to answer your question, fantastic. He's always great. Um, the opening shot of the film when he has a gun in his mouth at the mm-hmm. top of the building, they shot it in such a way. I don't know if they did this with makeup or if they, it, it's just like because I have seen the film before, I've read the book. I wasn't entirely certain at the top. I was like, it's interesting that they picked that framing because it made it look like it could have been either Brad Pitt or Ed Norton. I mean, it it seems like that might, you know, it's probably intentional because they look a lot alike um, in certain features in their face. And, And they're not at all bashful about like towing that line of, well, we don't want to give the trick away. Like they yeah. throw the trick in your face so yeah. often. And that's yeah. what makes it so effective because it's right there. It, they, yes. they tell you and you mm-hmm. don't know until it flips, which I think is so great. And, and, you know, having rewatched it after so many years, knowing what was coming and you watch uh, uh, Marla Singer and you're like, Oh, she's responding like he's crazy because yeah. he is crazy. Yeah. And like when you don't know, your mind just like makes up this story to make it make sense. But really, if that weren't the case, if they weren't the same person, the scene, none of the scenes with her even make any sense. Yeah. But you just fill in the, the blanks because it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. And yes. I think that that like her reflection of the two characters is the most impactful. Yes. It really kind of keeps everything uh, lined up. Yeah. And. Hmm. They, they really did employ a lot of interesting tricks when it came to the differentiation between the two, like making sure that, they only spoke to each other. And if one of them were talking to other people, the other one was not talking. Yeah. So one and person it, was in charge at a time. Yeah, and and it, I thought it was particularly like um, in your face when Brad Pitt's character, when Tyler provoked the owners of the bar mm-hmm. um, into a fight and he's totally beat up. And then it was almost as if, the narrator wanted to approach him to take over and he put his hand up like i'm still i still got this like i'm still conscious i'm here i'm still in charge and he put his hand up and it was like so clear in the frame like that it was so cool and intentional i mean how awesome is that scene and also what's not in the book i think i sent you that scene that exact scene in a text message a few months ago long time ago yeah we talked a lot about that scene yeah Um, great scene that's not in the book and there's a couple really great scenes that i don't think are in the book or are kind of like a combination of a couple scenes from the book and, and altered for the to to fit the story but i mean that scene's fucking awesome it's incredible um very risky i thought the performance was very brave on brad's part honestly. yeah it's like how do you it, it's just flipping a cliche on its head it's like oh uh, the tough guy fight club this dude let's have brad pitt kick his ass and uh, no, no 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 he just takes the beating yeah and and terrifies the guy just shows him a little bit of the crazy yeah a little bit of the crazy goes a long way yeah wild yeah what other scenes uh there's another one that i was thinking of oh the scene in the i'm, I'm talk about the changes the scene in the car in the book uh, to fill the listeners in the scene in the car, another famous scene where Tyler Durden is driving and they essentially intentionally get into a car accident. Yes. Tyler Durden's not in that scene in the book. Right. 
It's um it's a, the disciples. Mechanic. Yeah, the yeah, mechanic. The mechanic, which kind of changes a lot of things, but also I think the the leeway that they have with stuff like that, the filmmakers is like, well, Tyler Durden's in every scene that Edward Norton is in technically because mm-hmm. they're the same person. Um, right. Another one that stood out to me, the scene, what was it? The scene in the office where Edward Norton kicks his own ass, very yes. liar, liar-esque. Oh yeah, totally, totally. Um, which another thing that they kind of shove in your face um and i'm not saying that in a negative light at all a hint that they drop is when he says for some reason i thought of my first fight with tyler i have i picked up on that too yeah. right before he throws himself into the bookcase yeah and you can just picture he's kicking his own ass in that park in lot. the parking lot for sure and in the book the scene is pretty much the exact same except edward norton's character is quitting tyler's job as opposed to his own Yes. If I remember correctly, he's in front of the uh, the head of the union of projectors, right? Or is it the wait staff it, job? I, th- I thought it was the wait staff job, but I could be wrong. No, it's the wait staff job. And what's so funny is like having watched the movie first in a handful of times over the years and then reading the book, they blur together so much. Yes. Because you already see the characters. You already can picture these scenes and scenes that are in the book that aren't in the movie, you you think they are because you can visualize the characters and, and the cinematography and, and it's hard to remember which is different. Right. I think one thing, one difference that the, one of the differences that the film incorporates uh, was that Tyler meets the narrator on a plane yeah. instead of the beach. Yeah. Um. And then the soap is brought up. And yeah. I don't know. I, I thought it was almost better how they met in the film. Really? Yeah. I, did you not? I liked the, I mean, I like the symbolism of, of what happened on the beach, what Tyler was doing on the beach. I, I mean, mean, didn't I get... the the wooden driftwood that he was gathering, it made like a, sh- a shadow of a hand on the sand? Yeah. So like he, he built. Like, he come pulled, with me. He pulled all this driftwood. He, so in the book, Edward Norton it takes a little vacation to the beach. He wakes up on the beach, and he this is the first time he meets uh, Brad Pitt's character. And he's pulling driftwood out of the ocean, and he builds this little thing. And he explains that when he sits in the center of the driftwood, just for one second as the sun is passing, it will create the perfect shadow of a hand for just a moment. Because all you can ever expect of perfection is just a moment. And I feel like losing such a, a, a powerful symbol and theme from the book and kind of just scrapping it. They is transferred one of like, it to the film in a different scene. What did they do in the film? I think it I was remember. during a fight. Because I don't even remember the line. It is in the film. And it's but repeated I... multiple times in the book too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that honestly that's probably one of the one of the two changes that I, I was bummed out that it was left out. Really? I didn't mind that's that. That's what the other one is. Okay. What's the other one? Uh the ending? Yeah, the ending. <laughs> when they're watching the buildings. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the ending. Yeah. And like, you know, when I first saw the movie, it's like, oh, love the ending. Great. And and all you can really think about is the twist, you know, the the realization. But also you still have 20, 25 minutes of film. And in the book, you have about 30, 40 pages of book after you realize that, that they're the same person. Mm-hmm. Now, I liked the ending of the movie, but I loved the ending of the book. And I... I I just don't know. There's certain things that get changed that I just don't get why. That I just don't. I, I just go like, for example, like little things, like uh, the 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 echo line of uh, "I am I am Jack's liver" or "I am." In the movie, it's Jack. In the book, it's Joe. Yeah. Why change that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Why? 
I'm asking you. I, I honestly don't have. I that want answer answers. For you. <laughs> it's Joe. God damn it. I am Joe's rage. They changed it to Jack. I think I suspect, and this is completely ignorant and and founded on very very little, but I think uh, the screenwriter mm-hmm. finds little places where he can change things. Mm -hmm. So that on paper, it's more of his writing. Really? Well, I say it's completely ignorant and unfounded only because he's adapting a book. But I know that if you're rewriting a script and it could potentially go to arbitration, that kind of stuff is going to matter. Names being changed, little things like that. I again, of I course, don't think, but it doesn't. It's not going to change the fact that he is the sole screenwriter, and that it's based on this novel, right? But I still go, well, why? I would understand why that that would change? be a change if there were like multiple writers, of course, uh, adapting it, and they were like fighting it out for who gets like top billing maybe, as writer. Maybe, maybe but that, like maybe. that's not the case. Maybe there's another guy. That we also, that kind of stuff pisses me off so much, doesn't it? Yeah. Could imagine. Like I, I can't imagine. But what I will say is, when I was thinking about that, Joe and Jack elicit two very different images, and I feel like yeah. Edward Norton is more of a Jack. Sorry, Charlie. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I disagree completely. <laughs> I want that. now. That's my biggest gripe with the film: is that it's Jack <laughs> and not Joe it should be goddamn Joe. And here's the thing, you know, with with. I always say his last name wrong, but Chuck Palahniuk, with any writer, Mm -hmm. so much is intentional. So much is is there for a reason. Are you mad that they changed it from Joe to Jack because Joe is kind of a name for the everyman? It is. It's not my gripe with it. What is it? My gripe is why? Why? <laughs> because here's the thing. When you write that stuff, I mean, again, it very well could have not been for a reason. I suspect that it was. I mean, it, it all has underlying impacts. Very much so. And when you choose a name for a character or a recurring thing like that, it's intentional. And when you change it for no reason, and maybe there was a reason, maybe it impacted me more significantly as Jack, and I just don't know it, but on analyzing it, I don't know why. And it didn't bother me as much before we started talking about it as it does now. All right. I just made you so mad. Why? (laughs) That I liked it more in the film. (laughs) (laughs) God, give me an answer. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I can't help you with that. I'm so sorry. I'm just here to explore with you. And sometimes the journey is more important than the destination. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. All right. Now let's talk about the I end. I figured you would know that. What uh, What did you think about the ending of the film? I like the ending in the book more. You do? So do I. A lot. Um, I, I mean, it, got it the vibe that maybe they so just wanted much. it to be a more cinematic that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get like that. We have I the biggest, it. baddest actors in town. We have a big budget. They, yeah, they want to make a splash. You don't lose any of that, really, with the... I mean, okay, the explosions, sure. But you, you still, I mean, the fight sequence, all of that. But still, I, I don't know. I, I like the ending of the book. It, it, it felt like it knew which side of the argument it stood on a little bit more clearly. Whereas the film, the end did feel more of like a crowd pleaser. Like, let's give them this. And, and that wasn't in service of the story. Did you feel like in the film he was more... Edward Norton's character was, I'm just going to call him the narrator. I'm going to ignore the Jack and Joe thing. Uh, Did you feel like the narrator was more resistant towards the machine that was created by him? Like, did he fight it harder? Yeah, in the film. Um, I feel like he he fought about as hard as he was capable of fighting in both. 
Mm-hmm. Um, they did another thing they changed, which I don't like. <laughs> was <laughs> you're always so pissed, and I'm always pulling you towards positivity. But no, this is I'm not why mad I'm like at all. I love you. the movie. The movie's great. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but we're talking about the differences. So that's um, what we're here for. So Marla, yes, intentionally follows him to the building in the book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the movie, she's essentially kidnapped and brought to him yes. at the building. Yes. Those are two very, very different things. And thematically, having the support group come with her yes. so they can try and talk him. I mean, how do you go, nah, forget that? That's fucking great. And it's also kind of sweet that she's like, I don't know yeah. if I love you, but I like you a whole lot. Oh yeah, that was great. And instead, you that was get, really good. She's like, "You're the worst thing that ever happened to me." And then she gets yeah. on the bus, gets kidnapped, and is dragged back to him. Yeah. Where in the book, she follows him with a support group so they can stop him from killing himself. And she tells him that she she doesn't think she likes him. She knows she likes him. Yeah. That's two very different things. Yeah. But I guess at the end of the day, they felt. I the do same enjoy way that. You're other. right. Yeah. And then you get the he shoots himself, mm-hmm. killing Tyler Durden. This is the book, and winding up essentially what I believe to be is probably in a, a mental institution. Yes. That he is cleverly comparing to heaven. Yes. White on white. <laughs> that he wants to stay there for a while. Yep. And you just, you don't get that scene. Instead, you get the bullet went straight through his, out his cheek and he's fucked up, but, but fine. It's and, really and interesting and Marla, that they chose it that way because most of the book, he has a hole in his cheek. Right. And I was wondering, club. and I'm going, okay, I get your Edward Norton. You're going, I don't want a fucking hole in my cheek that keeps getting compared to a butthole. <laughs> well, that, and also like, I know they had a big budget, but the effects were different in 99 than they are today. So it might have been challenging to have Ed Norton have a hole in his face throughout the I entire film. It, I feel like they could have put the hole in the cheek if they wanted to and that it was a choice to not. I mean, obviously, but it seems like you don't put that on your movie star for the entire film. You know, in a book, you don't have to look at it the whole movie. I mean, every time it's referenced in the book, it's like the the butthole looking hole in my cheek. I honestly thought it would just be really funny to get a moment of him drinking coffee and then to have to like plug oh, yeah. the hole. It would have been such great. a great visual. There's so, and then like when he's on the phone and he just sticks his finger through the hole in his <laughs> cheek. But I get that you're like, okay, we don't want people to look at that the entire movie. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in the book, you can forget about it until it's brought up. Right. Right. Um, I just, you know, this is like such an obvious thing, but I just think it's important to pay um, respects to the efforts of, you know, the actor's choices, um, the screenwriter's choices and like wardrobe And directing because how they differentiated between the two characters, they they did a lot of things. Hmm. And one thing that particularly caught my eye, and I don't know whose idea it was, whether it was a screenwriter or Brad's or David Fincher's, whose idea this was. There is a shot of Edward Norton and Brad Pitt walking down the street together. Edward Norton is walking on the sidewalk and Brad Pitt is walking in the gutter, splashing around in the puddles. <laughs> and I fucking love that so much. I'm going to go that ahead was, and give David Fincher credit on that one. That was a because really- Because it's too, it's too symbolic and too well done to have been like a happy accident that Brad Pitt was like, I'm going to splash around in the puddles. I think it's you possible. never know. It's possible, I think that that's but a legitimate- um, decision that an actor could have made. Of course, yes. If presented, with I'm going to splash around in the puddles now. 
<laughs> right. But there has to be puddles for you to splash around in. That's the shot true. has to take place next to the puddles. Uh, That's true. It's too well done. This is why I love chatting with you because you, you know, I, you know, I'm an actor. I have dabbled in a little bit of writing, but not nearly as much as you have. And I've dabbled with producing. You have directed, you have been a cinematographer, you've written, you've acted, you've done pretty much every job there is under the sun behind the scenes. Jack of all trades, master of none, baby. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far to say master of none, honestly. <laughs> well, that, uh, in that case, just you know, I want you to take this moment the to take the compliment credit, very well and acknowledge. Been, I want you to acknowledge well that I just gave you a compliment, James. You, I know you're you. trying to ignore me right now. <laughs> very, let's give uh, Jim Jim Ewells. How do you say his last name? I, I struggle with. Uh, I I looked it up. I'm I'm Oles. not entirely certain, but I think it's Ols. And you know what was re- it, it very well could have been in the screenplay by him, um, possibly. Him or, or the director, I'm going to give credit to on that one. But that's like such but a nerdy thing noticed. to appreciate and notice. Um, no, I, I loved it. That's the little things like that that make, I think, something beautiful Yeah, or stunning uh, or effective. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you don't have to have a character say and will know who he is because he's fine with walking through the puddles. Yeah. And, and just it's the juxtaposition, the differentiation between the two. Totally. He he even says it um, towards the end of the film. He says, I look the way you want to look and I fuck the way you want to fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that beat by Edward Norton when he's like, <laughs> or no, it's, it's similar, but it's when Marla says, and you're a great fuck. And he's like, you're a spectacular <laughs> yeah. lay. And something even like though, that. even though, um, she says spectacular. I Even though that line. he knows and he doesn't identify himself at all with Tyler Durden. He doesn't even which is remember a bit of having art. sex with her. Well, he remembers things afterwards, but he still doesn't like identify with him having done it. But even that, he takes a little bit of credit. Like, eh, well, all right, it was my body. Well, he also has like, there are other hints there because he has a dream about having sex yeah. with her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the psychology of it is... It's so right up my alley, which is probably part of the reason why I wanted to do it. Because, I mean, I I can't help but kind of rip off Fight Club with everything that I write. <laughs> There's a short film that I did, one of the first short films I did when I was young. And it was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to just do Fight Club <laughs> short film, <laughs> shitty version of it. And everyone was like, that was so awesome. It's just like Fight Club. And I was like, I know. I did it. And the most recent thing I wrote, this horror script, it's didn't realize it at the time, but it's it's so Fight Club. I feel like the way you describe the look of it reminds me a little bit of Fight Club. Even King Me, the pilot we shot that I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a, you don't you don't know if he's imaginary, if he's part of his psychosis, or what it is. It's 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 an ongoing motif for me. I would say, one hundred percent. And he's just trying to be like his brother. Yeah, yeah. So you really, I'm, Fight more, Club and everything, I'm more right? impacted than than I've ever realized by Fight Club. <laughs> That's incredible. I love uh, that so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I I do want to like add. Um, Another like star of the show is like his wardrobe choices. Oh, I, that's what I wanted to bring up. I I'm sitting there. I I paused it because I wanted to be like, I bet somebody makes this bathrobe that I could buy. Yeah, the, the bathrobe wears, with the sunglasses is iconic. So good. Every all his outfits are great. And then yeah. I love, I love the decision of because uh, it's not. It, it, it's, again, it had to have been a, a Fincher thing, but. Once Edward Norton realizes that they're the same person, the next time you see Tyler Durden, he has his head shaved. Yeah. Which is, it's. You know, oh, not, that's such a clever observation. Yeah. It's not subtle as far as like, you don't like, obviously Brad Pitt looks completely different, but the, it, it sneaks its way in for you to not be like, oh yeah, now his head shaved. I wonder well, okay. What I associated the head shaving with was they were shaving their recruits' right, heads. Right. I wonder if Ed Norton had 
a moment of displeasure with his hair. I'm trying to r- r- like r- rack my brain. I don't I don't remember either. But but it is it's it's the first time you see Tyler with his head shaved. Yeah. Is after he realizes and in, it's in the hotel room. Yeah. I love Brad Pitt's performance. Oh, he's so good. It's like everything. He, just like his confidence. Yeah. He played like this air of like smugness about it. And then him, I love when fabulous. He's so in control at the very end. He's so in control when he's got the gun. And then Edward Norton's like I'm it's actually in the my gun. hand. Yeah. Yeah. And the gun switches hands. And this is the exact bit I did in that short film I was telling you about. Now I'm realizing. <laughs> direct rip off <laughs> and all of a sudden it's the first time tyler durden's ever like not in control for a split second and he flicks his cigarette to the ground yeah yep right. it's interesting with the cigarette flip flicks um the first one i noticed was directly at camera which was a beautiful when was that and i will say beautiful beautiful. in the parking lot right before he asked him to hit him as hard as he can oh yeah and i love that when he's like when he he knows the whole time why they're at the bar how many takes do you think fincher was asking for during this movie that's a great question because i hear i don't you know he's prolific for no he he he's known for asking for a lot of takes really i didn't know yes yes i don't know beats me but I would say you don't have to ask for a ton of takes from those guys. That, Especially true. Edward Norton. That's very true. But that's that's like what but he's again, sort he's of known for. for it, he's and people for. love it because it really allows you to let go of the dialogue. It's in your blood at that point. Yeah. I mean, at that point, it's almost like the first however many takes are just rehearsal. You know, just priming up. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I mean, if if that's the way you're going to do it, you're going to end up just using the last couple of takes anyway. Because if you're really thinking about it, there's so much going on in every frame, um, aside from the acting. Yeah. That I'm sure there was plenty because they you have mm-hmm. to get everything just right. Yeah. And and it it the, the, I mean to give credit to the editor too, everything just cuts together so beautifully. Did you, when you were watching it, did you catch the uh, uh, the subliminal Tyler Durden inserts? Uh, yeah, for yeah, sure. They, they were much more obvious than ever this time watching it. Uh, throughout the film? Yeah. Uh, I caught the last one, obviously. That one's probably the biggest one. Um, yeah. And I was wondering about the inserts. Now you're making me second guess, and I'll be fully transparent yeah, because yeah. you know i haven't seen this movie in forever i think i've seen this twice in my life i couldn't tell if they were inserts oh my god i just saw like something out of my periphery and i'm alone <laughs> that creeps me out what is You're happening in your head now i just saw what i'm it's about your insomnia. to talk about it's your insomnia We'll talk about, yes, you guys, I am traumatized after this film because I'm going, I'm having a bout of insomnia. I haven't been able to go to bed before 4.30 in the morning for the last two weeks. And I've been you, having to get up early the last few days. So I'm a little bit like are you, are wired. You, That's why James said I was low energy at the top. Are you trying to overthrow capitalism in your sleep? Who knows what I'm capable <laughs> of because I am a sleepwalker. Oh man! So so, who legit. knows what I'm doing? Um, I'm basically. I wonder what You're my ta- whoa. Can, okay, that's a question well, that I think I'm your... going to save for a discussion question. Yeah. What our alter egos would be like, but we're going to yeah. save that. Pin that, please. If you could pick a character from any movie to be your alter ego. Who would it be? Go. Oh, I don't know. Just from the gut, John Wick. Who? Nice. That's a good one. You love John Wick. I love John Wick. I love Keanu. Yeah, we all do. Get in, get <laughs> in line. Get in line, lady. Yours? Um, I mean, let's just be, you know, on topic and cliche and say Tyler Durden, right? Beautiful. 
What were we talking about before I saw something? Before you saw an oh, aberration? Oh, the inserts. The yeah. in, yes. I literally just saw an insert in my living room. I think that's <laughs> what happened. Um, I was confused. Is it an insert or was uh, I mean, Fincher slowly the word. was Fincher slowly introducing Tyler by having like blips of like his yes, like body pop right. up? It's almost as if like he was materializing before yeah. our eyes. Materializing. I mean, it's it's they're literally doing what Tyler does in his job. He works as a projectionist, and he likes to put just a few frames of a porno film he cuts it in to the movie now i used to work as a projectionist when i was a younger man really and in the olden days really uh, when yep never would you do you the that. same stuff uh never put uh, penises in movies no um, okay. but in the olden days when films were projected on film you have to splice the reels together because they come in like 10 minute reels. That's typically how film comes when it's 35 millimeter when you're shooting it as well. That's so you splice very all the reels together and yeah. then you have a giant reel that can go on the platter and feed through the projector. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can literally re edit the film right there in the projection booth if you wanted. So, what you do, you just cut any point. I mean, typically, I think in the movie, what he does is, is between the reels, he just takes a few frames of a pornographic film <laughs> and he puts it between the reels. So it acts as just a flash frame. You don't know that you've seen it, but mm-hmm. you've seen it. And this but is how I love that they cut some... to like people crying. <laughs> <laughs> Little <laughs> girls crying. <laughs> They're looking at each other. And this is what subliminal advertising used to be, still is essentially, but became illegal is they would flash like Coca-Cola. So like, your subconscious mind sees it and goes, oh, I want a Coke, but you don't know it. You're right. just being hypnotized. So what Tyler Durden does is he flash frames penises yep. in children's movies. So but you think it's just chaos, but he ends up using it to his advantage when he essentially blackmails the 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 head of the projectionist union. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, another thing, I actually He's tried to Google. He's head of the motor company yeah. that he works for. Right. Now, another thing that's in the book that bothered me a little bit, mm-hmm. at the book right here, um, in the book, when Chuck Palahniuk is explaining what Tyler Durden does, he says that uh, a projector runs film th- through 60 frames per second. That's not true. What what is it? It's twenty four frames per second. I'm sorry, and that's why you get that. It's why you get the movie. It's part of the reason you get the cinematic feel, and it doesn't look like you're watching sports on TV. If you watch mm-hmm. sports, you're probably seeing sixty frames per second. It's not film, but regardless, it's twenty four frames. I'm sorry, I, so I, I don't know what it. to I tell to look you. It up and nobody's talking about this. <laughs> we are. Nobody's talking about We're this. talking and it makes about this. Feel like okay, I'm stupid. I don't know how to read. I'm reading something wrong because I can't imagine that he would have gotten that wrong and it would have gotten through incorrectly and that nobody would be talking about it. So I'm certain that I am stupid and don't know what I read. For any of any of you out there, if you agree, disagree, please email us at based on show at gmail.com. <laughs> Wait, I think I found it. Are we allowed to read excerpts here? Um, as long as we're citing it, I right? Came on, I almost came on full monologue, ready to roll here. Well, we're going to cite what we're reading. Yeah. I mean, and it's not that long, right? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, and I love the, the echo line. I know this because Tyler knows this. I mean, right from the beginning of the, the film, right from the beginning of the book, they're telling you their brain is the same. And he constantly says, I know this because Tyler knows this. And we render it as, well, Tyler told him or they're that close of friends. No, no, he knows it because he shares a brain with Tyler. Totally. And we see in the opening credits, it's a journey through his brain. Yes. It's awesome. Trying to find this 60 frames per second bit. Let's see. (laughs) 
Well, I'm not going to find it anyway. Anyway. Okay, here it is. A single frame in a movie is on the screen for 1 60th of a second. Divide a second into 60 equal parts. That's how long the erection is. <laughs> <laughs> so he's saying he inserts one frame of an erection. Yeah. But again, I'm I'm going to stand by um, a single frame in a movie is on screen for 1 60th of a second. No, it's on screen for 1 24th of a second. Boom, done. Edit it, reprint it. We're out. See, so you, you guys drop, have shit to give him. Give based on show at gmail.com. <laughs> Send me all okay. the hate. Um, was were there any other observations that you made before I ask you the question of the day that you just came up with, which is what your Tyler Durden would be like? Didn't I I can't answer it with Tyler Durden? <laughs> Mine would be like a dumbed down version of Tyler. It would be like all of the bad qualities and none of like the cool, confident qualities. <laughs> I love that. He'd be like co- trying to cause chaos, but failing miserably. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's it. That's mine. All right. Fair. That was very easy. Easy. Done. Honest. Excellent. The truth. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Is there is there anything else? Are you are you satisfied with this with this exploration? Let me just make sure. Because I, la- I don't. Last time I had you on, I started to sign off because I got the vibe that we were done. And then, then you're like, have, wait a um, minute, no. wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, there's so much. Again, you know, we talk about this thing after reading the book once, watching the movie once. When I feel like I I owe you know, some some real analysis to the text in order to speak to it in any sort of competent way. And I said that definitely last time you were on the show, that's and that's your reiterate. way. You, you said that last time you were on the show, and that is your way of talking shit because you're like, Pamela, like this needs more reading. No, I just feel than like... you're doing on your show. Oh, no, not you. I'm saying for me, I'm dumb. I need no, to read you're not. It multiple times in order to comprehend it. And I just also think that I need to preface that because out of uh, just knowing what it, it, it takes as far as understanding the nuance of something requires that much analysis from me. That's all. All right. And I agree. I think the more that you're familiar with a piece, the more you're going to be able to contribute and break it down. And, you know, it's really just a way for me to, to, you know, uh, set myself up to have an excuse to be wrong and sound stupid. But I'm just I'm we're here to have fun and explore. Yeah, I know. I enjoy. We're not tackling pieces that we don't have respect for the reason we're choosing the ones that we are choosing except because... for a picture of Dorian. <laughs> well, we chose that because we have an immense respect for the story yeah. and that was a version that <laughs> I wanted to see. So, whatever. To to be honest with you, I think we're kind of getting a, an even deeper look into my psyche because I I did choose a picture of Dorian Gray and I did choose uh Fight Club. Now, at the end of the day, I mean, they're both essentially Jekyll and Hyde stories. Yeah. And, and Marla Singer actually has a great line, and I'm going to misquote it. I'm not sure that it's Dr. in the book. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Jackass, something yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just realizing that, you know, it's Fight Club is essentially a derivative of a picture of Dorian Gray. Totally. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, did you read the uh, the afterword of Chuck Palahniuk talking about Fight Club? No, I did not. Well, what he, something that he mentions is it's it's, it's essentially the Great Gatsby. Mm-hmm. It's two guys and a woman, mm-hmm. and a guy shoots himself in the pool. <laughs> and it's it's just really interesting how he simplifies the story. He talks about you know, the short story that he essentially wrote, why he wrote the short story, how he came up with Fight Club. Essentially, it was just, the rules were just a device. He just needed a storytelling device. 
And so he was like, okay, these rules will we'll work for that. And from that came Fight Club, mm -hmm. the first rule of Fight Club. And how iconic is that? And he talks breaking about breaking the rule of Fight Club. I know you don't talk. Holy <laughs> shit. I didn't even realize. <laughs> delete this fucking thing now. You don't talk about Fight We're doing the very thing you're not supposed to goddamn do. But he tells this, this anecdote of how it's a story. He may have made it up. I don't know. But he's at this haunted house. It's like a haunted tour. And this cowboy, you know, puts this rope around your waist or something. I'm botching the, the minor details. But the guy's leading him through. And he says the first rule of the haunted tour, whatever the haunted tour is called, is you don't talk about the haunted tour. And the second rule of the haunted tour is you don't talk. And he goes, hey, I wrote <laughs> that book. And the guy stops and he goes, what? What book? That's a, it's a book? No. And he goes, yeah, before it was a movie, before it was this, before, and he goes on and on to like, it, it's an interesting way for him to, you know, lay out the cultural impact that this story has had on the world. It's such a part of the zeitgeist. And he even talks about like, you know, people in Brazil dying in, in makeshift fight clubs and all of these things. Um, and he, and he, he says it kind of unapologetically, which I think is is right because what he essentially gets to is like people have been doing this forever and he says he says there's nothing that some guy from Oregon can imagine that hasn't already been taking place for tens of thousands of years and he goes and that's the same thing with fight club there's nothing that i could have imagined as a writer that isn't already happening in the world and i think that that's fascinating and true and potentially depressing. Okay. You're covering your mouth. What? What, <laughs> what did I say? I'm, did he specifically use Oregon as an example? Well, yeah, he's from Oregon. And he oh, it. got he it. Okay. There. okay. Why did you think I was just throwing that in there to be an I asshole? Did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's, is from Oregon. I always say, or is it Oregon or again? I always hear people say Oregon. How do you say I that? I pronounce it. I pronounce it Oregon, but um, I would say I've always said Oregon, and now yeah, I, know. I think people are giving me shit for it. It's Oregon. I mean, I feel like that's probably another like difference. Like I say creek. I have friends that say crick. Uh, that you say you, crick. You, you say, say pop. Crick? You, I don't say pop. I you say pop, and listen, I say this soda. is what happens every single time. My instinct is to say pop. I crush that instinct immediately before I say it, and then I start to say soda. I can't bring myself to say soda, so I just shut down and drink water. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you're Fair right. Enough. My instinct is to say pop, but I don't subject you to that. You say anybody. soda pop. I'll say soda pop ironically soda because pop. it's all I've got left. Or I'll say cola. Yeah, that bothers me. Don't do that. But I can't possibly refer Because when you're referring to cola You're talking you're talking Coca Cola or Pepsi or, or another type of but cola. But you're calling Pepsi Cola? Yeah, Pepsi is a cola. It's Pepsi Cola. All right. But do you are those the only two sodas that you refer to as cola? Yeah, I wouldn't dare refer to Sprite as cola because <laughs> it's not. Would you I refer love that to we orange talk juice that as we lemonade? I'm really happy we tackle the important things on this show. Yeah, we finally got to that. So it's Oregon. I, I'm not saying it's Oregon. I'm just saying that that's how I say it. Okay, fair enough. Everyone is from you should read it. It's, in, it's interesting. I don't know if it's in your copy of the book, but you should read it. Clearly, I don't have the first edition. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm not upset. Last question. Would you join a fight club? I would blow up my apartment. <laughs> Before you joined a fight club? No, I think... Um, what do you do when you uh, have an audition? I think the magic little thing. I think thematically the blowing up the perfect apartment 
is more impactful to me than joining the fight club. Like the idea of your things owning you. I mean, that resonates pretty deeply with me because, you know, I struggle with living too conventional, conventionally, sometimes I can't even say the word. And as you get older and start to get comfortable and start to should we obtain, hold the siren? Yeah, we got fucking sirens right when I'm about to get into it. <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying. You're right. Uh, you your have a problem. You. Your possessions own you. And I think that uh, I've always resonated with that. And I've always lived, you know, somewhat of a gypsy lifestyle, not to an intense degree by any means, but I like to be able to only have enough that I can just pack it into the, the back of my truck. Or, or my cherry or whatever it may be and hit the road. Yeah, I, I remember get the feeling of now I have these things. And I it, remember it can be a burden. when we were first becoming friends, you said to me with a lot of pride, you're like, I can pack my life in two hours. Yeah. And there's some, there's a, ton of freedom in that and you're like i did that on purpose i if it's gonna take me yeah, more than two design. hours i don't want it it's by design um so i think that that aspect the uh, blowing up your apartment because your your things own you resonates with me much more than joining a fight club in order to feel uh, an emotional high of some sort not to say that it's it's not intriguing or impactful to me the idea of that level of intensity kind of bringing you to life and putting everything into perspective i definitely understand that very good yeah i we, i did great because i didn't even go into any rants about capitalism or the system maybe or, that's or why you pushed marcuse once Maybe that's why you perceived me as low energy. Maybe it was the impending doom I was feeling. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> go into anything like that. You did such a good job. I'm very proud of you. I didn't bring up the French Revolution once. Except just then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just piling it all in at the end. Are you on reading top. Kafka? <laughs> I, yes. I have. It's funny. I have. Kafka's aphorism sitting on my desk right now. Oh my god, amazing. But I just flipped through it. Very good. James, thank you so much. No, thank you. I had a blast. I had a blast. Are there any... I know you just came on my show recently, but this is time for you to plug. Again, go. Um, no, we plugged it on the last one. We're good. Okay, do you have any book recommendations? Not um, Kafka. I mean, you can, but... <laughs> Book, book recommendations, recommendations, movie recommendations. What books did I recommend the last time? Mm. Probably Dostoevsky. Dorian Gray, probably. We, yeah, Dostoevsky. but we we're talking about that. Uh, some, hey, read some Hemingway. All right. We've talked a lot about Hemingway. So what I want to put out there, my recommendation, my plug, pick up The Old Man in the Sea. Give it a read. More, the Sun Also Rises. Give it a Old read. Man in the Sea is a quick read. Quick it's read. funny that you bring up Hemingway because that's the person that Brad Pitt's character oh, chooses I to fight. Oh, I noticed that too. Not in the book, <laughs> but in the movie. In the movie. he they, they do the little bit. It's a little bit of an ongoing thing of who would you fight. Of course it would be Hemingway yeah. and Shatner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. That's amazing. Yeah, that's my plug. Read Hemingway. Um, Beautiful. That's it. Awesome. Where can our guests follow you? Um, you can't. I'm going off the grid. You are again. You yeah, just came back on the grid. I know, and it's affecting me very negatively. Um, well, this I is really probably, a long time. I'm probably going to start a different social media uh, just to post some art stuff without having my name attached to it, so that I have less anxiety. About so you're not going to share what that is. So I'm not going to share what that is, but just know that um, if you read Hemingway, if you read The Old Man in the Sea, um, I, you may be eligible for some free art under this. How are they going to know where to go? They're not. 
if they stumble upon it, they'll know. And oh they God. and only they will know and they'll feel special. I'm going to tell them and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you're not going to know. You I know. know. I already know. You don't know shit, man. I know plenty. <laughs> I don't give a shit anyway. Just read the goddamn book. Read a fucking book, everybody. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what are we doing next? All right, guys. I just <laughs> wanted to. <laughs> hey, what do you got to plug? Plug something. Me? You're the podcast mm. queen of America. You're Josephine Rogan now. What do you got? You're What's coming out next? Of control. Um, this is coming next. This isn't out right? yet. So please share uh, episodes with your friends, family. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a review. It's so important. It takes a couple seconds, but it's so helpful to, you know, making sure that we can continue to do this and talk nonsense into your ear. So I also wanted to invite you guys to send over any questions or fan fiction that you may be writing, or any comments on the episodes. If you want to talk shit about James, like please, like I will definitely probably have him on again, even though I'm he just kind it. of Listen. scowled big nobody, time. Nobody has said worse things about me than me. That's, I mean, accurate because you do except for you. <laughs> you no, it's not true. You give yourself a really hard time. I'm like, I'm like blowing up your, I'm pumping your tires all the time. Yeah, right. So. Okay. Okay. Um, also, so, can you? Yes. Can I finish plugging? Or let me no? Throw this in there. You know, let me yeah. Throw this in there. You yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Opportunity. If you pick up on the Billy Madison quote I dropped. Oh my god. Email that on over. Or did I? You, you dropped you wouldn't one. Wouldn't know because you haven't seen the movie. I did see the movie. I just don't know it as well as you do. And also listen to the Dorian Gray, and you'll pick out about five of them. Email them all to Pam and say, "Oh, you haven't seen it." I have seen it. What are you talking about? You're watch the fucking movie again for the purposely love of God. trying to turn all of you against me because he wants to be a permanent co-host. For the love of God. God. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no secret. <laughs> that's no secret. I'll be good. I'll sit here and shut up for the most part while other people talk. I really don't think that that's likely. <laughs> Guys, so as I was saying, if you have anything, questions, comments, concerns, insights, fan fiction, whatever you want, send it over. You can email us at basedonshow at gmail.com. This was based on an adaptation podcast. I'm Pamela Portnoy. We'll have a new episode out to you every Monday, every other Monday. We'll have a new episode out to you every other Monday. It's fine. You can find us on no. iTunes. <laughs> Fucking nailing it. Start over. Stop man. looking Come at me on. like that. You're <laughs> making me feel like I'm bad at Take this. Take two, roll camera, <clears throat> camera speeds, and action. This was based on an adaptation podcast. I'm Pamela Portnoy. We'll have a new episode out to you every other Monday. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and YouTube. And please don't forget to subscribe and leave a review like I mentioned before. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Based on Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you again to our lovely guest, James Liddell. And thank you to Tiffany Hamoff. Jackson Palmer, Claire Palmer, Maya Ashkenazi, Jordan Ross Weinhold, Jason Crow, and Soundwork Studios. Bye.